Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, July 11th. Okay, so we have the moon in this Virgo energy for the majority of the day, but we are going to see the moon go void, of course, at 9.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Libra energy at 10.07 p.m. The transition from Virgo energy to Libra energy is always a welcomed one because we get to move out of the heaviness of that earth energy that Virgo brings, having us focus on the present moment, on the issues, on the problems, on the obstacles, of course, all in efforts to fix them, to heal them, to repair them, the Libra energy offers us an opportunity to find balance within our ideas, within our emotions, within realizing what needs to stay, what needs to go, where it is that we have to kind of find a happy middle ground again before we can start making the shift in our inner realm to change, to transform, which side note is coming with the moon in Scorpio energy. We have to prepare our thoughts, our ideas, our emotions, our perspective. We have to get in alignment. We have to find peace and harmony and balance within ourselves, within our heart and head. And then we make the change. We make the transition. We make the transformation. And then we see it actually manifest in our physical realms. So, of course, today is a very busy day in the cosmos. There are 13 different aspects popping off here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. However, in the background, we have to remind ourselves that Venus is closing out her chapter in this Cancer energy and shifting into Leo energy. There is an astral forecast for this particular event. If you want to go ahead, take a listen, bust out your cancer season e-guide, really capture the heart activations going on at this time, the shift and the mood and the attitude that you are currently standing in at this time. It is going to be very important puzzle piece to the next coming of weeks, especially the next month where we have a change of heart, where we have new passions, new desires, definitely festering, putting us out into the world, making us bold and brave and courageous to do all the things that we've been hesitant to do. And of course, make some major progress. Again, if you haven't listened to your Zodiac forecast for the month of July, I'm going to recommend you do that. Your sun, your moon, your rising, your big three to get the big picture on what July, especially Venus's shift into Leo energy is going to mean for you. Okay, so let's jump into the day. The moon in Virgo energy going to sit across from directly oppose Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. Virgo energy, Pisces energy is the healing axis of the zodiac. The Virgo energy focuses in on the physical realm, the mental health, while the Pisces energy focuses in on our emotions and on our spiritual realm as well. This opposition is definitely going to be a little bit tedious. We are going to feel the negative narrative kick in. We are going to feel the struggle, the heaviness, the weight of the roles and responsibilities weighing very heavily on our shoulders at this time. We have to really focus on the smaller details of our lives, what needs to stay, what needs to go. There are certain parts of the foundation still alive and well in our physical realm that the old version of self has built that need to go. We have to tweak the foundation, that structure just a little bit. We have to invite in new aspects to the framework, especially with what it is that we believe we're actually capable of. The moon is then going to sextile the sun, of course, still in this cancer energy. Anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together in an interaction, there's going to be a pop off, a light bulb moment, an epiphany of sorts of wants, of needs, of desires, of what it is that we have to do, where it is that we have to pivot, what it is that we have to do to grow, to evolve. This is a sextile. This is a merging of energies, which means that we are definitely realizing where, especially in the structure, the boundaries, the framework of our lives, we have to do better. We have to strengthen those boundaries just a tad in order to kind of nurture ourselves back to a place of health and wellness, back to a place of emotional safety and security. And we're definitely starting to realize the bad habits that we have, especially putting other people's wants, needs, and desires before our own, where we have to kick them to the curb in order to take care, better care of thyself. 
Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in Gemini energy. Again, very divided on the choices, on the options, on the opportunities that we want to pursue. Also, definitely magnifying our ability to push the boundaries of our mental plane to expand on certain thoughts, ideas, and belief systems. Jupiter is sextiling beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. That North Node trying to get us on the right path, trying to get us to grow, to evolve, to heal, to repair thyself, trying to push us on a path that is more of a solo quest in order for us to truly get to know who it is that we currently are. Jupiter and the North Node, sextiling, merging energies together, giving us a glimpse of some new options, some new opportunities for us to make some progress, for us to move forward. There is going to be a magnification on the hype, the excitement, the inspiration that we're able to tap into right now while kind of moving into imagination land and visualizing the options, the opportunities that are calling to us the most. Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. Mars is in this Taurus energy, a fixed earth sign, thus why there hasn't been a whole lot of option to make some progress, to actually move forward, to actually see in our materialistic realm the opportunity to grow, to evolve. The, let's call it growth, the evolving has been taking place within us. We've been having to cultivate a new fire, new spark, new flame, new excitement, new inspiration, new motivation, new determination to actually see things through. This is growing in self-worth, self-confidence, self-esteem. We are building ourselves up to a particular action point. Now, Mars is making a very positive interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in Aries energy. And again, Mars rules over the Aries energy that Chiron is currently in. So Mars and Chiron kind of working together here is poking the coals, if you will, really nurturing that spark, that fire, that flame. We are tapping more into the positive qualities of this new version of self than anything else. This is a positive interaction, which means that we're not really focused on the wounds. We're more focused on the healing, the growth, the repairment, our openness, our willingness to actually see where it is that we could do things differently, make some change, where it is that we could transform certain physical realm aspects, routines, habits, relationships in order to create a different result. The moon then goes ahead, makes an awful interaction with Chiron. So this is a good example on where it is that where we're building ourselves up, where we're seeing an opportunity for growth, where we're seeing an opportunity to actually move on and make some progress. Just when we're feeling good about that, that dark force energy in our egoic programming creeps in, brings up all the fears, all the doubts, all the insecurities. The moon in this Virgo energy, again, nitpicking, really analyzing, really dissecting our emotions, our thoughts, our perspective, our overall understanding of the world around us and how we're operating in it. Again, the interaction with Chiron, because it's a negative one, this is when we're focused on the wounds more so than the healing. Again, we're sitting in fears, doubts, and insecurities. We're picking ourselves apart. We're beating ourselves up. We're breaking ourselves down. It is a natural step of the progression of the moon in Virgo. Why? Because in order to fix a problem, you have to be aware of it. In order to heal a wound, you have to be aware of it. And you really have to feel it before you can heal it. And because the old version of self with the old fears, the old insecurities, the old limiting beliefs, haven't quite gotten fully released yet. This is the particular point in time, just when we're feeling good, when we're feeling confident and optimistic about ourselves, about our abilities to actually move forward, to grow, to move on. This is when that dark force energy is going to highlight the ifs, ands, and buts, the shoulda, couldas, wouldas, the absolute focus on all that is bad in order to take focus on off of all that is good. Now, the moon in this Virgo energy, then going to trine beautiful interaction 
with Mars. So first we had Mars making a positive interaction with Chiron, then the moon making an awful interaction with Chiron, and now the moon and Mars are coming together for a little bit of a pep talk. So this is a trine. This means that we're moving on. There's a gentle nudge. There's a little bit of growth. Because the moon is in Virgo energy, that is a mutable Earth sign. Mars is in a fixed Earth sign in Taurus energy. So we got some Earth on Earth action happening here. And what this is going to help us do is to be logical and practical in our emotions, in our disposition, in our thoughts, in our ideas, in our plans, in our strategies to move on and move forward. Again, Mars building the good energy. We're confident. We are, I'm going to say, more certain that we're capable of doing the things that we have to do to make the major changes. We are inspired. Maybe we're using the fuel of anger and frustration to push us forward. Maybe we're using excitement and inspiration. Either way, there is a little bit more of a plan, a little bit more of a strategy coming into focus with this particular interaction. We have Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the final degrees of this Cancer energy, 29 critical crisis degree. She is going to trine beautiful interaction with Neptune, who is retrograde at the 29th critical karmic degree of Pisces energy. So this is water on water action. We love Neptune and Venus working together because Neptune, technically speaking, is the higher octave of Venus. Venus rules over the physical body and the heart space. Neptune, again, our spirituality, our intuition, our dreams, our creativity. So whatever it is that we get downloaded with, an idea, a vision, a goal, a dream, we're able to drop it into the heart space, really manifest it, bring it to life, give birth to it, create something new through Venus. She is the physical body that basically gives birth to creation of the spark, the fire, the flame, the vision, the goal, the dream that gets manifested in the higher forms of our intellect. That's where the divine intelligence comes into play. So first of all, this is a powerful interaction. This is giving us hope. This is restoring our hope, our wishes, our faith, our dreams, especially where our happiness is concerned, especially where our love and affection is concerned. This is putting us in a situation where you might be in the right place at the right time in order to actually see your next karmic chapter unfold. What do I mean by that? Sometimes you see little glimmers, little indicators, little hints, little clues, and you're, if you're paying attention and piecing it together, you're definitely getting a little bit of a movie trailer, if you will, on where it is that you're moving away from the old and where it is that you're pivoting towards the new. This is a magical time. Not only are we being kind of refreshed and renewed in our heart space, not only are we being refreshed and renewed in our spiritual space, but we are gifted with a beautiful opportunity to really observe the glimmers, the glimmers of hope, the glimmers of these wants, needs, and desires, the realization that Karmically speaking, something very serious is taking place. Why? Well, because the cancer energy that we're about to move out of is karmic in nature. Again, inner child work that we've been doing, um, really focused on relationships, focused on familial matters and the structure of what we need to build and create in order for us to move on and move forward in the healthiest of ways. Neptune, of course, is all about our intuition. This is the supernatural part of us. And of course, karmically speaking, we're moving into new soul contracts. All of that get triggered and activated moving into cancer season through the solstice. And so this at 29 degrees, another karmic layer is very revealing on where it is that we're kind of letting certain aspects go, especially that have weighed very heavily on our heart space in order for us to feel lighter and brighter, more hopeful, more wishful about the things to come. Very shortly after this particular interaction takes place, Venus is going to be moving into Leo energy, 12, 19 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the energy building up to that particular point, likely going to have major heart activations. Again, listen to this week's Ascension forecast if you haven't already. And even if you have, maybe take a little bit of a second listen for a little bit of a reminder, a refresher on some of the physical experiences that take place when the energy shifts. The moon, still in this Virgo energy, going to try and beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener in Taurus energy. Again, earth on earth. We're grounded. 
We are very aware of our physical bodies, of this present moment, of our physical realms. We are very logical, very practical with taking a good look around. We are very logical and practical in us realizing what we have to change, where it is that we've been resisting change, why it is that we've been resisting the change, where it is that we are essentially our own worst enemy, where it is that we have to get out of our own damn way, where it is that we're having epiphanies, light bulb moments. You can't unknow once you know. Therefore, in order to take new information that is very profound, very revelational, if you will, we have to pivot. We have to try something different. We have to take a well-calculated risk. Again, Virgo energy being very analytical, very precise. We have to take a calculated risk, that risk energy coming from Uranus, in order to actually break away from some of the bad habits, some of the ruts, again, earth energy that we have all been in. We have to break away from those unhealthy habits, create something new, bring something new to life that is going to support us in this next karmic chapter. The moon then going to make a tough interaction with Mercury. Mercury rules over the Virgo energy that the moon is in. Mercury currently in Leo energy, trying to get heart and head aligned. The moon being our heart space, Mercury being our head space, they're not in alignment right now. We are kind of struggling because emotionally speaking, we want to rely on facts. We want to rely on information. We want to rely on data. Mercury, on the other hand, over in the Leo energy, we want to rely on emotion. We want to rely on passion, happiness, joy. We really have big ideas, a big vision for the future that feels heart aligned. But our headspace, not down with it, doesn't make sense. And sometimes when you write your goals on paper, they may not make logical, practical sense, but you know that there's just a heart and soul calling that you have to do, that you have to pursue in order to actually see something come to life. So there is a struggle there, emotionally and mentally speaking. We're not on the same page and we are trying to get on the same page, but we're not there just yet. The moon is going to directly oppose Neptune, who is retrograde in the Pisces energy. So again, the moon being in the final degrees of this Virgo energy, as we prepare to shift into the Libra energy, of course, is going to make an opposition with Neptune over in the Pisces energy at that 29th degree as well. This is where, again, you're going to be illuminated to where it is that one part of you is really connected to the physical body, to the physical realm, really dependent on logical, practical evidence, logical, practical proof. Neptune, on the other hand, needs you to pour into your imagination, into hopes, into wishes, into dreams, into the faith, into the trust, not only within yourself, but in the greater, grander plan of the cosmos. In opposition, yes, is going to highlight where it is that we're leaning too far into one point over the other and where it is that, again, we have to achieve balance in order to be in alignment, blending our intuition with our intellect and moving forward from that particular merging point. 9.55 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going void. Things get shaky, things get unstable, things get uncertain. We're second guessing ourselves, we're tearing ourselves down. Things are anxious, especially because the Virgo energy does bring in a lot of anxiousness, a lot of worry. But that's okay, we're not sitting in it for too long. Technically, like, let's say almost 10 minutes, we're sitting in that shakiness. And then 10.07 p.m., we lock into that Libra energy. Now, Mercury is going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune. This is where things get hella confusing. First of all, we have a very skewed perception of reality. The reality that we're looking at, we're not looking at it with clear eyes. We're tainting it with hope, with wishes, with dreams. We're tainting it with the biggest, boldest, most courageous outcome that we could possibly even dream for ourselves. Even more than that, our intuition is not as strong as we would prefer it to be. Therefore, we're second guessing what we're actually feeling. Okay, so even further than that, we're hella confused on what it is that we're actually being called to do, what we're being called to pursue. We are second guessing everything 
everything that we felt semi sure of over the last couple of days, now we're going to pivot and analyze it from a totally different perspective. So the last thing that we have going on here is the moon now in Libra energy. And again, side note, the Libra energy usually Typically speaking, we experience extremes with the moon in Libra energy because the whole point of the moon in Libra is for us to find balance, for us to find compromise. How do you do that? Well, you have to go from one extreme to the other. Okay, we're in one extreme. Nope, this is pretty extreme. This doesn't feel good. Let me go all the way to the opposite extreme. Nope, this doesn't feel good either. We scooch our way back. We don't go to the furthest extreme. We just kind of near our way there. Yep, this feels a little bit better. Now we go to the opposite side. This is over the next couple of days. And again, keep in the back of your mind, we are going to have the first quarter moon pop off in Libra and energy here on Saturday. This is the back and forth the cha-cha-cha, if you will, in order to find a brand new sweet spot. Anywho, the moon in the Libra energy going to sextile Venus. So Venus rules over the Libra energy. Venus just shifted into Leo energy, the heart and soul of the Zodiac. We have air energy, Libra, fire energy, Leo. And what do we get? We get some sparks. We get some passion. We get some excitement. We get some realizations, especially with what our heart wants us to do, needs us to pursue, needs us to express, needs us to explore. This is going to be a, I'm going to call it emotionally uplifting ending to the day where we're starting to feel a little bit of pep in our step. We're starting to feel bold and brave and courageous to pursue a new path. We are recognizing new wants, new needs, new desires within us. Everything feels light and fluffy. Everything is peachy keen. Now hold on to that. Take an energetic snapshot of that energy because we're not going to stay in that energy for very long, but it is definitely a good way to end the day. <laughs> <laughs>